Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. Today we are doing back brakes on a Citroen C5. Now they're more or less, well, practically the same as the Citroen CX we did, but on this one it's a lot newer and yet going off the far side, absolute nightmare. This job started out just has discs and pads, very straightforward. Then we discovered that all the um, as you can see all the metal around it so all the all the dust guard for the pads completely rotted away the bolt that goes through the caliper completely rotted away and not only that even the caliper is rotted away and this will give you an idea of what I mean as you can see this is the big long bolt that goes through the caliper that holds the um, brakes in this is from the far side obviously as you can see the caliper, you can actually see the bolt, look. This is, the caliper is supposed to have a lot of metal around here. So this bolt slides through the caliper. But as you can see, look, just absolutely nothing there. Just completely gone. It shouldn't, it shouldn't do that. There should be a big hole in there for this bolt to slide through. So it's just turned into an absolute nightmare. The bolts were seized in here because this is kind of like a cast alley type metal. And they're going to steel bolts. So that was that was an absolute nightmare so these two bolts and the special bolts we don't want to snap them just as you can see a nightmare a simple job has now turned into pads and discs the fitting kit and also calipers so uh, an expensive job in the first place has now turned into well ridiculously expensive i would be expecting this on the older citroen the 1979 or so, I can't remember the year, I think 79, Citroen. But that Citroen was absolutely brilliant. This one, 2005, as you can see, just completely rusty. And the old Citroen doesn't approve. As you can see, there she is, look. And uh, yeah, she was a piece of cake compared to this. Right, the first thing I'm gonna do because uh, I'm not getting the calipers till tomorrow, but this could take a long time to get off because I had to re-thread all the threads in the car on the far side. So I want to get this off ready for tomorrow because he needs this car in the afternoon tomorrow. And if I leave this, there's no way it's going to be done in time. The first thing I'm going to do is take off the, um, the, the brake fluid line and I've got a little stopper here which I've basically made as you can see I flatten one end so it can't come through I'm just using a universal joint so when I take that out I can put up against here and all the fluid isn't going to come out it means I can take off this caliper without losing all the fluid now we need to see if we can even get this off so I'm using an 11mm spanner now you can actually get a special brake line spanner for these but this one is coming off nice and easy. So normally I wouldn't be using uh, an open end spanner, but it's coming off nice and easy. This would be the last bolt that will come off <laughs> nice and easy. This is the problem. Again, I've talked about this on a few videos. You do a, well, what's supposed to be a simple job and it turns into an absolute nightmare. Now, lucky enough, this customer understands and I've obviously told him what's happened. But some, some people don't understand. They think, oh, well, you never said it needed that and all this sort of stuff. But you just can't really predict what happens until you really do it. Like a bolt could break and that bolt could take you three hours, four hours to get out. So unfortunately, it's not really an exact science. Now, be very careful of this. As you can see, that fluid is dripping, which is no good. So what I'm gonna do is put this little connection on, which will just blank it off. Uh, 13 and an 11 mil just to tighten it. So 13 mil here and the 11 mil, and we'll just tighten it. Now, if it was the front caliper. I could actually uh, clamp the flexible hose part but because this is the copper hose you obviously can't clamp because if you clamp it you're not going to allow the fluid to come through this will just now i can leave this here the fluid isn't going to drain out at night so it means i don't have to bleed the whole system because bleeding the whole citron on a citron is obviously different to bleeding on another car and i don't want to go through that 
What I need to do next is take off these two um, T30 Torx screws that actually hold the disc in. Now, again, you can have a nightmare with these. These can break or they can come off really easy. But what I will suggest you do, this is on any car, before you do it is just give them a couple of taps with the hammer. Now you want to hit these quite hard because if they are rusty you can kind of shock the rust into breaking this because the rust can form a seal and with this hitting them now it still might not come off easy but it is kind of the easiest thing so then I'm going to get my T30 torque and see if I can that one's come off nice and easy now that's brilliant the other side didn't come off that easy at all. I should have made you film the other side because uh, the other side would have showed you what can happen. But these have come off nice and easy, which I'm not complaining. On the far side, one of them broke. Now, it doesn't really matter if both of them broke, to be honest, because uh, once the wheel's on, the wheel holds everything in place. So it's not really a big deal. The only thing it really does help with is the hub. The, um, the bolts can be mislined, but it's not really the end of the world. But if they come off like that, don't. it's obviously fine. If they break, I really wouldn't worry about it. Now on the far side, these two bolts were basically seized. Absolute nightmare. And I had to be careful, because I don't know if I'm gonna get these with the new calipers. There's a good chance I will, but I don't know. And obviously I don't want them to snap, because if they snap and they're, they're inside the thread, you have to drill it, and it's just an absolute nightmare. And this was the bolt on the far side. Now it was all seized inside the caliper. I had to get a punch on top of it and punch it out. But the problem with doing that, I damaged the threads at the top. Now, I don't know if you can see that. What I've basically done is I've mushroomed the top with a little grinder. And once you mushroom the top, that allowed it to screw back in. Now I'll show you on this. But um, yeah, just a nightmare. And I also had to re-tap where the bolts actually go in because it was that it was that badly seized it actually damaged the threads coming out so what i suggest you do under no circumstances use an air gun to take these off just don't because you will cause yourself trouble get a wire brush and just get as much crap off as you can at the thread sticking out because the threads are sticking out at the end the problem that causes is all the crap goes on the threads and if you try and screw this out well, you're screwing all that crap and you're going to damage everything around you. Now, they're still going to be difficult to take out, but it's going to be a lot harder to take out if you do that. So I'm just spraying WD-40 everywhere to give it a bit of a chance. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to have to heat this up because if I don't, they're going to snap. Um, same on the far side so I'm just using my little gas blowtorch now you have to be careful because obviously we've got ABS sensors and stuff here you don't want to burn through them and what I'm actually doing is I'm not going on the caliper I'm going on where the caliper bolts on the car now just let that WD-40 burn away you have to be careful with these flames coming up as you can see I have to be very careful just going to let the WD-40 burn off because that's just set fire to WD-40 now, I'm not heating up the caliper, I'm heating up the metal that these two bolts bolt into, which is part of the back, and my head getting in the way, which is part of the back subframe. Right, I've been heating that now for about 10, well, five, 10 minutes, and it's obviously, them, them little gas torches don't get them red hot, but I mean, they still put an awful lot of heat there. So now I'm hoping this is gonna work. What I suggest you do, is you look at the back of the nut as you're turning the head just to make sure when the head's turning the actual whole thing is turning you're not basically twisting it in the middle and breaking it this is a bit nerve-wracking That is just wedged even now. That is just not moving, I'm gonna break it. So I'm gonna to have to heat it up a lot more um, and hopefully 
it releases. But that is very, very tight. Some more heating and hopefully see what happens. Let's see what happens now. You see, I could just use a longer ratchet, but the problem is the longer ratchet you use, you will lose the feeling. And if it's too long, you can snap the bolt and you don't really even know you're doing it. So I just, I don't want to use a longer ratchet yet. So we'll see if I can crack this. This is going to snap. I don't like it. It's not good. I mean, that is, it is hot. Not a lot more I can do with it. Now, a bit of good news is the whole thing is turning, which is good, but it is tight. Now, I'm not using it, I'm not exactly using the small ratchet, because the ratchet I'm using, you know, it extends, so it's fairly, it's a lot longer than a normal one. I have a bigger one, but I don't want to use it yet. The problem is, you can't quite see you might be able to but it's just the whole caliper is rusty and obviously the caliper even inside where the bolt goes through and it's rusted the bolt to the caliper as well as rusted the bolt to the actual carrier on the car so I'm trying to fight against all that that's gonna snap there's no way that's coming out so what I'm gonna do I wouldn't really normally do this, but I'm going to hit the bolt. Be careful I don't damage the top of it so the, the socket won't go on. I'm just trying to loosen all the rust and crap. See if that's done any good. Certainly did some good, but still not great. I'm going to heat this again. I'm going to heat the bottom of the caliper, um, which I don't like to do, but because we were changing it anyway, it doesn't really matter what we do to the, cal the caliper. So yeah, more heating. Now, normally I would never heat a caliper. Um, because obviously you can do damage to all the seals and stuff inside. We're not having to worry about this cal caliper because we're changing it. Now I've heated up even more. It's really as hot as I can get it with this little um, handheld torch. And I'm just gonna have to see what happens. It's so tight. I don't know if it you can hear that noise. I think this is going to break. Problem is I've got no choice but to keep going because it has to come off. I think and I'm hoping we get new bolts with the calipers but I'm not 100% sure.
Now we've got it, we've won! Squirt some WD in there, some down the hole. Ah, amazing. A lot of heat, a bit of patience. Normally I would say you have to loosen both of them first. If I fully take this one out, I'm going to struggle getting that one out, but not on this case because as I pull the top nut, I'm pushing the caliper towards me, which is going to push towards a disc which is going to help me. So I'm going to fully take this one out while everything's nice and hot so it doesn't get stuck again. the same with the top one. So I'm going to hit the top bolt. Hit the top of the caliper. Heat it up. Hit it again, the caliper. That's what loosened all the crap. And then screw it off. So once I got that done, I turned the cowling back on. But it took about an hour just to do that one. Um, yeah, these should be off in a few minutes. It's mostly going to take me two hours just to get two bolts off. But hey ho. Right, as you can see, disaster. One of the top, well, the top bolt snapped. Um, lucky enough, it snapped at the top, so it leave me a big long bar, so I should be able to unscrew it from the actual carrier. But the problem is, if I don't get these bolts with the new uh, calipers, I'm in trouble. Um, it could have been a lot worse. All four of them could have snapped. Only one of them snapped on me. But even with heat, hitting with a hammer and another hour or so, it just it just snapped. Um, so yeah. Now what I've got to do is try and get this out somehow. Um, so undo this one. problem I had with the last one is the bolt seized inside this caliper so I've got to now try and pull the caliper off but to try and unseize that bolt is going to be very very difficult I don't know how I'm going to do it yet um, but we will see I'm going to take out this bolt hopefully this bolt will come out and then I'll turn the camera back on and we'll see where we're going from there right if this doesn't work I'm in trouble I've got a porter power here as you can see there's a clamp on this end here and as you pump this handle the clamp opens which should spread the caliper I've managed to actually split it about an inch or so so I'm hoping this is going to do the rest Now there's a hell of a lot of pressure on there and it's still not budging, which isn't good. Hopefully this might help. Problem is now, putting too much pressure on one side of it. There we go. Oh, please, come on. Please. Oh, 
fucking nightmare! What an absolute joke! Five minute job turned into fucking three hard hours. You can see all the crap and crud that was inside that was locking them together. That's why when I was trying to heat it, I was hopefully trying to loosen all that. Um, just a nightmare. Hopefully now I can get a vice grip or something along them lines on that. I mean I could even put something over and weld a nut onto it but hopefully I won't have to do that. The problem is it's all bent. The whole bar has got bent so I don't think I'm going to be able to slide this part out. I might be able to cut that and then slide it out but I don't know if that's going to help me any. I'll get a bias grips on that and see what happens. That's as tight as I can get them vice grips and it's just not, no, nowhere near tight enough. Uh, and the only good thing is that whole thing is moving. But at least that's something. Hopefully with a bit of more WD, a bit more heat, hopefully. just might start coming out at least at least we've cracked the threads at least it is moving it'd be a lot worse if we didn't do that but the problem is now I'm fighting against the what's actually stopping me now believe it or not is the caliper it's seized it's seized inside the caliper not actually seized on the threads so, this now does become a problem because I don't think there's any way of getting this caliper off. So yeah, that's my problem. Not the actual threads, the caliper. What a boss. I mean there is maybe try and get a, a saw blade in there and just cut it off that way and then hopefully the threads will come out because it's loose but if I do that I've definitely got no nothing to grip onto so I could be causing myself problems even there. If I could get the whole bar to move with inside the caliper I would be okay. So if I could somehow get this bar to twist inside this caliper, I wouldn't have a problem. But with it being so badly seized and badly bent, I can't see that happening. Now, the only good thing is I don't have to save the caliper. I do have to hand them back though because you do have to give calipers back when you get new ones because there is a service charge on them otherwise. So I, I, well, I don't know if I can completely destroy it because I might incur more expense for the customer. But I might have no choice. Hmm, decisions.
that's actually moving the caliper. So I maybe keep doing that. This is going to be awkward. Now nah, that's turning. Oh. This is going to take a while. I'm going to have to keep doing that. Turning the vice grips half a turn at a time just to get that thread out there. Um, so I'll turn the camera back on in about four days once I've managed to do that. Now, just a nightmare. I've been at it for I don't know how long. Just will not come out. What I've had to do, I've had to cut a big slot in it with my angle grinder, which is basically opened up the metal. I've squirted a lot of WD-40 down and I'm using a stud extractor. This is a 10 mil, I think, yeah. 10 mil stud extractor. Which basically all it does is it, it clamps onto a round bar. And let's hope that it does what we need it to do. Now it's gripped. Yes, it's working. Oh, that is music to my ears. That. Oh no, please, please, please. Keep going. Oh. <laughs> Fucking nightmare of a job. A five minute job turns into more or less a day's job. Oh, nope, we were okay. I thought something happened there, but it wasn't. little bastard. Now ah, you can see the big slot I had to put into it. That's just completely seized in there. The amount of tools I've had to use to get two bolts off is unbelievable. Stud extractors, porter powers, air tools, heat. Oh, just absolutely ridiculous. Now, the only problem is I now need to hope I haven't damaged them threads. Now, there's nothing I could do about it if I did. But, what I'm going to do, I've got a tap here, which is M10 by 1.25, that's the thread. And I'm going to re-tap these. I had to do the same on the other side. And the other side, I thought was bad. Nowhere near as bad as this. Now, as you do this, you just want to every five or so turns just turn back the opposite way just to release all the burr fill the lube I'm not doing a new thread I'm just cutting the existing thread that was there just in case because I don't want to come to this and then have a problem with putting the bolts back hope that I get new bolts because otherwise I don't know what I'm going to do if I don't Now that's recut the threads. I don't know if the camera's going to pick all that up, but there's all the bits of crap and crud and all sorts. So just clean that off before I do the next one. Throw a bit more WD in there. A bit more in there. A bit more. The only thing with these, you have to be very careful. Just make sure you're starting straight. You don't want to be starting at an angle because otherwise you'll cross thread everything, you'll destroy it. 
and you're going to be in more trouble than you ever was. bottom one actually seems worse than the top one. Now we're all the way through the end. Right, so we know, which is this, this is the most important part, that these threads are okay, because, I mean, worst case scenario, you can always get bolts, but if, if you start damaging these threads, well then you're in serious trouble, because it's all part of the axle. Now, yeah, full of crap again. So as you can see, I've put like a, a mushroom shape on top of here because I damaged it. This was this was the far, this was the other side one, but this one should now screw very nicely into here. As you can see, it screws in straight away. So that's a good sign. So that we now know that them threads are okay. Perfect. Just try the bottom one. And as we can see, straight in the bottom one. Now that's brilliant news. That means we're obviously okay as regards that. But, where is the other bolt? What I now have to do is take this bolt out of here without damaging it. Which is easier said than done. I was going to put this to the vise, I'm just going to hit it. I'm going to have to put a punch right in the middle there so I don't damage the threads and hopefully just try and push this out. Right, all I've done is cleaned up the threads on the wire wheel. Lucky enough it just punched out really handy. I'm just going to see if it screws in. If it doesn't, oh it does. If it didn't, all I had to do was put a little mushroom on top of it. That's not a big deal. Now, I have to wait till tomorrow now, but we're, we're missing one bolt. Now, it could be worse. We could have all four snapped. If we don't get the bolts with a new kit, then I'm going to have to look for a bolt. I've got a load of stainless steel bolts. It'll do for the time being until we get a proper one, but we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully these come with the new calipers. I hope. Anyway, look, I'm going to call it, but I'm going to leave it to that. I'll finish the rest of the video tomorrow. I'm going home because I'm tired and I want to go to bed. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Hello, day two. Well, day two for me, two seconds for you. Right, we have all the parts we need now, so what I'm gonna do is put the new disc on. Now, like I always say, you have to check your disc, make sure the diameter is right, make sure this height is right, make sure the studs line all line up, and you can check that against your old disc by laying it on top and beside it and that. Then next thing you need to do is clean off all the um, oil and grease that comes on the disc to stop it from rusting when it's um, in storage. Once you've done that, you can actually put it on. The T30s. Now these don't have to be tight. These are only, they don't hold the disc on. The wheel nut actually holds the disc on. This just holds it in place. So just a nice nip will be absolutely fine for this. Just like that, I'm having no problems at all. Now, we had a bit of a problem this morning. Now, we got the new caliper, which is looking lovely. Perfect. Um, and as we can see, the bolt actually slides through. It's not stuck how it's supposed to be. I don't know if the camera was showing it up, but basically yesterday, as you can see, that lip here where this bolt goes all the way through, if I get a spanner on it maybe. So this whole lip here, where I'm showing on the spanner, was completely rusted off the old one so there was no hole for this pin as you can see this pin has to go through them two holes which um, holds the um, pads in that was completely rusted off that whole section there and also on the other side just completely gone which is unusual but anyway um, so that was the problem with the actual calipers the calipers are working it's just you couldn't hold anything the pads wouldn't hold now there is a left and a right, so you have to make sure the bleed nipple's at the top and the, um, where the fluid goes into is at the back. Now they can only really, you can't really fit them wrong, but always, always make sure the bleed nipple's at the top. 
because if I was to do that, technically it would go in, but um, the connections are the wrong side. So just make sure the bleed nipple's at the top and that connection's on the inside. Now all I need to do first, really, is once I've got the disc on, because this is all nice and new, I obviously don't have to clean it, but I am going to put some grease in it, just why it's here. So I'm going to put some grease where the actual pads would sit. So we've done that. The other problem we had was in the packet we should have got four new bolts. We only got two. So we only got bolts for one side. Luckily enough, only one of the bolts snapped on me, but still. Um, so just be careful. I should have got four new bolts, but I didn't. I also should have got all the little clips and the little dust guard. I didn't get them either, but lucky enough, a few weeks ago I actually ordered these separately. So we, we got away with that. Otherwise we would have been in trouble again. So you put these little special lock washers on, which go down there. So there's no lock tight or anything in there. Put the uh, caliper on, slide it in between the disc. Screw it on. Now the little 8mm bolt is holding the caliper together, so everything that's inside the caliper is in there. I haven't touched it, and it means I don't need to touch it, which is a good thing. So I'm just putting these on. As we can see, they're going in by hand, which is obviously very good. Now this is kind of a tricky part, because these need to be tight, because they do one or two things. They, not only do they hold the caliper onto the car, they actually hold the caliper together. So you need it tight so it doesn't leak. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna tighten this up. We don't need any Loctite on them, because like I said, there is special lock washers. And you do have to be careful with Loctite, depending on where you put it. I did a video recently on a timing belt on a van and uh, Loctite and sealer can hydraulic lock a bolt and cause you an awful lot of problems. Now you want to tighten this evenly and obviously we need to tighten it quite tight because it has to seal the brake as well as hold everything on. Now, that should be fine. Fine and good. What we need to do next, I'm gonna remove the bleed nipple. 11 mil, and just take off the bleed nipple, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this gravity bleed first. So I'm gonna undo our little lock blocker here where we've actually locked the brake off. I'm gonna screw it into the caliper. I'm gonna let the caliper bleed itself just by pure gravity. Once the fluid comes to the top, to be fair, as long as there's no bubbles and the fluid keeps coming out, it will basically bleed itself. But we are going to just make sure, so we are going to bleed it manually. But once the fluid starts coming out here and there's no air bubbles, you are really kind of safe. But we're just going to do both. And I'm wearing gloves today. I'm wearing these gloves, especially for Daniel, because I know what you said. I know what you said when I was doing the Cosy engine about me gloves. Yes, I know. So I thought I'd wear these today, especially for you. Right, so I'm just gonna loosen this. Now you have to be quick here. And the other problem is, depending on if you've bent the, um, if you bent the pipe, it can be kind of difficult to put on. But I hopefully haven't bent the pipe, but I won't know until I, actually try and put it on. So make sure it's lined up because these won't go in unless they're completely straight. Now that the reason why I took the bleed nipple off now is because this, this pipe is at the minute is dripping fluid into this so it's going to give me time so hopefully I get this down the fluid might be coming out so I don't have to wait too much longer. I think I've got it now. So you do have to be careful with these because they will cross thread and you can damage them very easily. 
Now, I think we're okay there. Just waiting for the fluid now to come out here. So just kind of keep an eye on that as well as tightening it. I can just see the fluid coming now. So that's good. bubbles come in, which again is also good. Now I'm lucky enough with this brake pipe that the, it's very good. I can use an open-ended spanner but you do need to be careful in doing that because you can very easily round it. Now as you can see, well I might not be able to see, it might have to bring the camera a bit closer. Hopefully you can see that there now. The fluid is coming out. There's a couple of air bubbles. You can just see the air bubbles coming through. Now if you were to leave that until there's no more air bubbles, I can guarantee you now the system is bled. Because if you imagine the fluid coming in, it has to rise up. So it pushes all the air out as it's coming out. So you can't really go wrong. Now we are also going to bleed this, but what I'm trying to get at is, you know, you can you'll be more or less safe as long as you've got all the air out. You need to do this regardless, because if you don't do this and you screw that, you keep the bleed nipple screwed down as you're putting this, it's going to be full of air, so it's going to take longer to bleed. So always let it bleed first, just by gravity, because it will make your life easier when you come to bleed it properly. So I'm just going to screw that down for the minute, just to make sure it's locked. Now, what we've also got to do is once we've bled this and we put the new pads in, we have to get someone to put pressure on the actual brake pedal. We'll just make sure we're not leaking in between the gap of the actual caliper. That's what we've got to make sure that we're not, you know, the, the, where the caliper is split, it's not actually leaking. So what I'm going to do now is take this little 8mm off. So it's just this threaded bar which holds the caliper, well that holds the pads in and it also holds a little dust plate and also the clip. But as you can see, hopefully it's coming through, there's a hole directly through that so the bolt goes through. And like I said, on the old caliper, this bit here was just completely rotten. It was just, it et away, it wasn't there. So we have the new pad, what I'm gonna do is just put some copper grease on the edge, even though we've already done that on the caliper, but still doesn't hurt. And then put all copper grease on it, and then just slide it in. As easy as that. It's gone a bit too far. The top hole here is where the bolt goes through, not the bottom hole. So that's what you need to line it up with. Same again, cup of grease on the edge. Make sure you don't get it on the pad because you won't be breaking anywhere if you did. Or well, you might be, but you'd be breaking into the nearest tree. Right, so now that's done, very simple. What's next is this little clip. Now this is like a little anti-rattle clip. The way I find these easier to put in, the lip basically hooks over here. There's a, there's a little hook on them. But what I like to do is put them completely in. So put the little hooks inside the caliper. So there's no pressure on it. Then put the bolt through the pads, through the caliper. And then all I'm doing, hopefully this is coming through, I'm lifting the clip back up through and resting it on the caliper. Now, as you can see, I've just lifted the clip so the clip is resting on the pad. That is now putting pressure on the pad so it's gonna stop them from rattling. If you try and do that properly by putting them over there, you have to push down the pin and it can be very, very awkward. Um, so I just find it easier to do that. What I need to do next is put the little washer on. Now, I'm not putting on all the way. I'm leaving a gap between the washer and the actual caliper. Because what I need to do is this little dust plate, as you can see, has a hole through, and that 
the washer holds this little dust plate onto the caliper. So you need to get it in between the washer and the caliper, just like that. Now we can actually screw this in properly once I get 8mm spanner and an 8mm socket. This is what the new one looks like and this is what the old one looks like. And as you can see, right in here, hopefully the camera's picking it up, just in there, oh, there we go, is part of the old caliper rusted onto this little metal plate. Drop the spanner. I hope I'm not getting in the way doing this, but I'm going to put that on, put the spanner on, hold that little pad in place or the little cover, and just screw the bolt. It's holding the, cap, the pads in, but it's also holding this little dust plate. We have the uh, dust plate on, everything's on. All we've got to do now is I'm just going to just bleed it. I'm going to get someone to hop in, pump the brakes. We'll show that on camera, even though I've done vid separate videos on that. But we'll show it. And then uh, put the wheels back on and it's done. So absolute nightmare. It shouldn't have been anywhere near as hard as this. Um, should have only been a five minute job to take off them bolts, not a five hour job. It literally, I think it's took, I don't know, four or five hours to take them four bolts off. Um, now, if, if I could afford to break them all and I didn't care, I could have got them off in a couple of minutes. But because I was trying to save everything, and as it turns out, just as well I did, because I only got two bolts with the set, you know, um, so it was worth the while doing that. But unfortunately, it took me a lot longer than we had planned. So, welcome to the wonderful world of mechanics. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out the little rubber part, which can be stuck. We've got someone in the car. Now, I haven't, I could have left this bleed nipple open longer to get all the air out. But I just kind of want to show you what it looked like if you didn't. And you, by rights, you should have a pipe on here too, so it all doesn't splurt in your face and get on the disc. But I just want to show you what it's like. I'm hoping to get a lot of air coming up through here now, just to give you an idea what it's like. Press down hard. Yeah. So he's now pumped the pedal until it's gone hard, and he's, he's, his foot is now pressed on it. So I'm going to open this bleed nipple. And as we can see, a lot of air came before the fluid came. The pedal's going to go down. He's now going to pump the pedal until it goes hard. Once it goes hard, he's going to tell me. I'm going to try again. Not as much air this time, so we'll do it one more time. Right. So the pedal is now hard. A little bit of air came out, so we'll just try one more time. Right. And there we go. No air came out there at all. And hopefully when he pumps the pedal after a couple of pumps, it should be hard straight away. Yeah? Perfect. So that's how you do it. So look, that's everything done on this, as you can see. Absolute nightmare. If this comes and you're at, yeah, you're at home on the driveway, you're going to struggle because I struggled even in here with all the tools I've got. So um, let's hope it doesn't um, happen to you. But look, I hope it helps. Thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next.